Welcome. My name is Martin Hönigl. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at the Division of Infectious Diseases and Global Public Health here at UCSD. And now I will talk about crossover design. So here you see the crossover design and what it looks like. Basically, you have a population and they get randomized to receive either intervention one or intervention two. And then this intervention is crossing over to the other intervention. So those randomized to intervention one will then basically receive later in the trial intervention two, while those randomized to intervention two will later in the trial receive intervention one. So every participant here will get both interventions, but they may get them in a different order. They are randomized to a sequence rather than an intervention. So what are the elements of crossover designs? So each patient is exposed to each treatment with or without a washout between the periods. And that's very important because you can see if there is, depending on the pharmacokinetics of a drug, um, there might be a period where a drug is still active even after you discontinue the drug. And that's when you need a washout period. You need a break basically to make sure that intervention one drug is not still active when you, once you start intervention two drug, um, because that would of course um, um, confound your findings. While a parallel design compares differences between groups, crossover designs really compare differences between period of treatment within the same patient. This is, of course, also an uh, important advantage, as you can see, in terms, of uh, in, uh, in terms of matching, because it's the same patient. However, it must be applied to conditions that return to baseline quickly, as I said before. It's not good, for example, for a curable um, 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 disease, because that might be cured after the first intervention, right? It must be something that re really goes back to baseline. For example, pain would be an example. What are the advantages of a crossover design? It's efficient. It requires recruiting half the number of patients because every patient will be enrolled in both arms, basically, just a different sequence. It also reduces within patient variance because every patient is serving on both arms of the study. And it may enhance, and that's a very important point, recruitment because all participants experience both interventions, right? And this is especially important when you have a really new, very promising drug. And this is the main motivation for people to um, be enrolled in your trial to receive this drug. In such a design, you can guarantee the people that everybody will receive two drugs, right? It's just a matter what you receive first, but you will receive both. However, again, there are also important disadvantages. First of all, I talked before when we talked about the washout period, about these carryover effects. That means the effect of an intervention persists during the second treatment phase, right? So you still have an effect of basically intervention one while the patient is already receiving um, treatment two. This is also, of course, um, um, true for psychological effects, right? You have, must be sure that, you know, if there are psychological effects that um, come with responding to um, the first um, intervention with treatment, these are not carrying over to the second treatment. So there's more, there's a bigger placebo effect, for example, while receiving the second treatment because of the psychological effects. It's not as useful for episodic disease that is not a constant, a constant, a co constant um, 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 pain, for example, or not a constant condition, um, but it's really episodic going up and down because this may also confound, of course, the severity of a disease um, between the two um, interventions in the same patients. Dropouts, of course, you don't need to enroll as many patients, but at the same time, it's a longer trial, right? So there's a greater chance that at some point a patient may drop out. Um, it's also twice as long, right? So that's also something to consider um, for planning and for budgeting. It has a more complicated analysis, and it's really difficult to prove that the difference between treatment effects is independent of the period of treatment. This brings me to our exercise. The objective here is that during watching the lecture, out of the two options I'm given, please select the research question 
that may be best answered um, with um, the crossover trial design. After watching the lecture, then you're asked to design a randomized clinical trial um, with a crossover design, um, including the flow diagram, define the primary outcome, um, and list basically for both options that I will give you on the next slide advantages and disadvantages of the, com of the crossover design um, versus a standard parallel design. So these are the options um, for the exercise. Option one is to compare efficacy of a new drug, um, let's name it here hiperadivir, versus standard of care, which is here daily fixed dose combination of sobosprevir, valbatasvir for 12 weeks, for curative treatment of hepatitis C infection which really means a sustained viral response with no measurable HCV um, in blood for um, 24 months in treatment naive patients. Option two is to examine whether a new opioid is associated with fewer gut-related adverse events versus conventional opioids for cancer-related pain in patients with advanced stage metastatic non-small lung cancer. This is the solution. Option two is the right response to examine whether a new opioid is associated with fewer gut-related adverse events versus conventional opioids for cancer-related pain in patients with advanced stage metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. I told you before, chronic pain that's expected to come back, that's also consistent over time, is of course um, a, good, um, um, a, good, a, a, a good condition um, for such a crossover design. Um, we just have to make sure to have some washout period to make sure that the opioid that is given first um, is not carrying over basically to the second um, treatment period. But of at the same time, this washout period um, with opioids usually doesn't have to be very long. Why is option one not a good choice for such a crossover design? First of all, it's a curable disease. Um, and as a curable disease, obviously, um, this would be a big problem for such a crossover design because now we know with new HCV treatments, there is um, cure above 90%, right? Um, there's some reinfections later. We don't talk about this now, but cure, in, 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 initial cure is um, very frequent now. Um, and therefore, people would be cured after receiving the first intervention and would not be even able to receive the second intervention. That's why option one is here a clear, clear no-go for um, a crossover design. Thank you.